Welcome to Ask Firebase, the show where we answer all of your Firebase questions. I'm Jen Person, and today I'm joined by Todd Kerpelman. Hi, we're here for a very special Cloud Firestore version of Ask Firebase. All your questions today are all about Cloud Firestore, and hopefully we have some answers. From Tyler on Twitter, he asks, are auto-generated keys in Cloud Firestore based on timestamp, like it is in the real-time database? And if not, how can I query document data ordered by document key? All right, so I, I hear you know the answer to this. I do know the answer to this. I learned this actually when we were uh, doing our latest zero to app talk at the Firebase Developer Summit because we took the existing app that we had for translation and we changed it to use Cloud Firestore. And that's when it occurred to us that no, it does not actually use um, auto-generated keys using a timestamp the way that the real-time database mm -hmm. does. Do you know why not? Why don't you tell me why Fun not? Fun fact. So apparently there's one of the kind of strange but true uh, limits to uh, Cloud Firestore is that there's a limit to how many writes you can perform within a collection on fields that have sequential or very close to sequential value. Um, which is kind of a weird, obscure limit that you'll probably never run into, but we have to worry about it when we're generating like massive collections that might have a timestamp or a timestamp-based auto-generated document key. And it's, you know, 500 writes per second, which again, for a small or medium-sized app is probably fine, but, you know, we want to make sure Cloud Firestore can scale to like millions upon millions of users. So um, we decided to go with sort of a more opaque document ID, not one that's time-based. Yeah, good news is, of course, you can still query document data uh, by a create a date using a timestamp, which is actually what we ended up doing in our app. So we added a timestamp and then we ordered by that. So we'll go ahead and link to that as well so yeah. people can so see. So you explicitly, like. did you do it on the client or did you do it with a cloud function? Uh, we did it on the client, actually. Right. But I mean, yeah, we could have done both. But yeah, either one works. Either. Do whatever works for, for your app. Just do remember there is that like 500 writes per second when you have fields with sequential values limit. But again, like for a chat app or anything like that, um, you should be fine. Cool. Cool. So this next question comes from a whole lot of you. Can I do text searching or light queries with Cloud Firestore? Have you run into this? I have seen this question. I guess the answer is not natively. And this is because in general, Cloud Firestore was built with a philosophy that basically every query has to be fast. Like it's basically impossible to build a slow query in Cloud Firestore. And we sort of did that intentionally because we don't want you in a situation where like, you suddenly have to re-architect your entire database structure because you know, you've hit a million users and things are getting slow. Now, this does mean that every query you run in Cloud Firestore has to be supported by an index. And it turns out sort of doing like a full text search um, with an index is kind of either really tricky or impossible, depending on how you're trying to do it, because you know you can't really index for like every character that's in a text string. Sure. So there are sort of some solutions that involve uh, third-party libraries like Algolia or Elasticsearch. Um, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to supply your text to them, um, and then you can run your text on these services or run your search on these services, and they'll give you back a list of documents that you could then query on Cloud Firestore directly. So. Would that be a good use case maybe to use uh, cloud functions for Firebase to maybe do that search and then? Why, yes, that would be, yes. Actually, a perfect example for, for using cloud functions. Like, yeah, anytime you notice a document gets updated, you'll probably want to do the work to make sure that gets copied over to Algolia or Elasticsearch or whatever third-party solution you're using. And if you check our documentation, there's a solution section that actually describes all this in full detail. So you don't have to figure it out all on your own. You can just kind of copy and paste what we did. Sweet. Yeah. OK. The next question also comes from a lot of you, which is, why did you make a new database instead of just fixing the old real-time database? Fixing? I didn't think the old one's broken. It's just, they just work differently. I don't think it would have been possible for the team to have sort of added all the features they did, kind of the new data structure, the querying capabilities, the sort of you know shallow queries, um, and sort of all the scalability on the existing infrastructure. Or you know, if they had somehow managed to like cram a document database into the current real-time database, it would have been sort of a giant non-backwards compatible kind of mess that would have broken all your code anyway and probably ended up being a worse product. So um, you know, I think in this case, creating a separate database was really the smart move. And you know, all of you who are using the real-time database continue to use that. Everything just keeps working just fine. Of course, if you can think of a way we could have done it that would have elegantly served the needs to new and existing customers, uh, let us know because you know maybe we'll offer you an engineering position because that sounds like hard work. Absolutely. Yeah. 
sort of along those same lines, I've seen a lot of people asking, you know, what is the difference between the two databases? And I think you sort of anticipated already that people were going to be asking about this. I did, because there was a blog post. We'll link to it somewhere yeah. below, because, um, you know, Every time you use view the blog, I get more like hits and I don't know, that makes me look cooler. We're listening. So when you come to us with questions or suggestions, uh, that's really how we end up making our products better. And I think Cloud Firestore is really a result of listening to what people had to say about the real-time database. Yeah, I'd agree. If you've been trying this stuff and you have any other feedback or something, like, you know, you can either let us know in the comments below or if you see me on the street, just grab me and be like, hey, I got another Cloud Firestore request. And, um, I'll be like, okay, but let go of me first. And then you can tell me all about it. That's when you know you really made it, when you're walking down the street and somebody asks you a question about Firebase. Yeah, I have not gotten to that point yet, um, but but if if I do, I guess I'll know I've, I've made yeah. it. So you know what to do then. When you have your questions, make sure you post them on social media or Stack Overflow with the hashtag Ask Firebase, and maybe you'll see them on a future episode. Are we still doing this thing where we do like the hashtag? <sighs> I don't know. I'm really trying to like let that go. All right, you know that, that's okay. It was, uh, maybe uh, that maybe... was kind of a season one thing. We're on to season two. Yeah, we're on to season two now. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on a future episode of Ask Firebase. All right, it's gone. It's done. No. We didn't sync that. Yeah. Time.